But good morning, guys, from Belfast. Um, Belfast Landing Place Railway Station, which is just around the corner there. Um, and I'm taking the train from there up to Port Rush via Coleraine, apparently, where I've got to change. Uh, I've never been on this line before, as you can tell. It's a beautiful morning, it's a little bit cold. Um, but yeah, the sun is out, so I'm hoping to keep the feet dry. Why don't you come with me for this trip, and I'll see you a little bit later on in the journey. Cheers for now. Yes, yeah, so it was a lovely morning in Belfast, although the forecast was for rain later on, which I wasn't really that well prepared for, to be honest. Now I was down on the River Lagan filming this intro, which is a much better location than Belfast Lanyon Plate itself, uh, which, as you can see, is not the most aesthetically appealing railway station I've ever been to. But I had come in from Bangor, so it was an easy connection here onto the train heading north. I went in through the car park entrance, I guess you could call it, and up the escalator to um, quite a modern looking concourse. The Lanyon Place was only opened in 1976 and was originally called Belfast Central. It underwent an extensive facelift back in 2018, including the removal of a blast wall outside the main entrance, uh, which was erected during the troubles in Northern Ireland uh, of earlier years. Now at the same time the station was renamed, uh, really just to reflect its actual location in the city I think, uh, rather than anything else. Uh, down by the tracks here, you, you have basically two island platforms, and numbered one to four, as you would expect. And you can get here to anywhere on the Northern Ireland rail network. Uh, even the train down to the Republic on the Enterprise, um, which I will, by the way, feature in a separate video on this channel. And here was my train arriving, the 1120 London Derry, or Derry service, operated by a Northern Ireland Railways Class 4000 three-car diesel multiple unit. Now these Spanish built trains entered service in Northern Ireland between 2011 and 2012, replacing the old class 450s here and they are capable of a top speed of about 90 miles per hour. Our first impressions on boarding were, yeah, quite roomy and bright I thought. Uh, I found one of the few seats still available and settled in for the journey. Uh, look how the weather had changed as we left Belfast. Uh, this service was quite busy already and I think a lot of the passengers would have boarded at uh, Great Victoria Street, uh, which is the other main railway station in Belfast, uh, probably a bit more central actually, and where, where the train had actually originated from. So let's have a quick look at the seater. Um, yeah, not the greatest leg room in the world, to be honest. Yeah, taller people than myself would feel a little bit cramped, I think. Now there is a seat back fold down table with sizeable ridged edges to prevent spillage onto your lap and a cup locator circle, I think I'm going to call it, um, just up here. All in all, nice and clean, um, as was the carpeted floor, which was good to see. The seat itself was upholstered with this blue and red moquette. I'm not sure if it represented anything. Uh, if you know, please let me know. It was a little stiff if I was being harsh, but um, comfortable enough for the first part of this journey, uh, which would be around 1 hour and 20 minutes. <coughs> Above the seats were glass-bottomed luggage racks on both sides, uh, with ample storage space for, I guess, what would be termed as medium-sized baggage. Now notice here that there was also a catering trolley on board, uh, which, although I didn't buy anything today, was great to see. And another indication that um, some kind of normality is returning, even though the requirement for everyone to wear masks was uh, still in place at the time of filming. Uh, one thing to note, however, is uh, there are no power outlets fitted on this train, uh, so make sure you're charged up and or have a battery pack with you. Anyway, we were well into the Northern Ireland countryside at this point, and note how the weather has improved once more. So please, enjoy the scenery with me as we make our way north towards Coleraine.
Okay, so whilst the weather had become a little grey again, I thought it was an appropriate time to do the loo review, uh, which as you can see here is closed and locked uh, by the push button method, beneath which is located the litter bin. A large mirror to my left uh, above a circular sink uh, with remotely activated water and liquid soap and a working hand dryer. Then continuing left we have the baby changing table, which was clean, although no babies were available to be swapped out today. A hinged arm rest next to the toilet, uh, which was also handily placed to act as a toilet roll holder. Um, there was an emergency call button here as well you can activate whilst sitting on the toilet if um, you find it necessary. And there's also an emergency call button at floor height opposite. And a couple of kotuks concludes this tour of the accessible toilet, um, which yeah, it was uh, very clean and in good working order. No issues at all. Right, so after reaching Coleraine, it was a quick walk over the footbridge onto Platform 2, where our train, another Class 4000, to Port Rush, was waiting. Now, these trains run about every hour and a timetable to connect with the train from Belfast. I believe there were also a couple of direct trains, um, though as always it's, it's best to check the timetable before travelling. Now it's single track all the way from here to the seaside resort of Port Rush, and it would take us about 12 minutes and stopping at a couple of halts, University and Duvaran on the way. And as you can see there, there's quite a few people making this connection, uh, but I'm sure it would wait if there are any delays to the Belfast service. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there are any passing loops on this branch line, so ultimately I guess it's just the same train shuttling backwards and forwards um, for most of the day. We left Coleraine, which was itself a nicely well kept station I thought, uh, with a level crossing at the northern end, over which we would proceed up the line. It was still quite quiet on this three car unit, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to sit at a table seat. Again there are no power sockets here, but the table's sturdy enough and I'm sure you'd find better leg room in these locations. Now, incidentally, there are no first-class sections on these trains. It's standard all the way, uh, and as such, you will note that they're laid out in a standard 2-2 configuration, uh, with a mixture of airline and table seats, as expected in all three carriages. Now, the weather wasn't looking great again, was it? But uh, there did seem to be some blue sky in the direction in which we were heading. Well, the closer we got to the seaside, the more excited I became, I think. And the price I paid for today's journey, uh, well, I travelled into Belfast first from Bangor, and so the cheapest way of doing it for me was to buy an iLink one-day travel card, uh, which cost me £16.50 plus a £1 activation fee. Now the cards are zone-based, so basically the further you travel the more it costs. Uh, Port Rush was in the furthest zone, Zone 4, which meant I could basically travel anywhere in Northern Ireland uh, on a single day with this travel card. Uh, by the way, you can also use it on the bus. Here we go. See, I told you it'd be nicer on the coast. I reckon, judging by the amount of caravans and other holiday accommodation around here, 
It must be a really popular destination in the summer. Now this is a great approach into the town. Look at the views here over West Strand Beach as we approach the station terminus. It's beautiful, isn't it? And also, as we pass the water tower here, just check out the old semaphore signal in still in use. And I love this kind of stuff, and I think it gives the place a really powerful and evocative feel. I'd like to close the photos of Port Rush, and I'm hoping to mail some out to my members on Kofi this month. Yeah, I know it sounds like an advert, and yeah, to be honest, it, it is. Uh, but if you do feel like signing up, then please take a look at my page below. I'd really appreciate the support. The rest of the station, unfortunately, wasn't up to much in terms of architectural merit, uh, but it was right in the middle of town, so it was a short and easy walk from here to, well, anywhere really. I ended up outside the town hall where I paused for a while to summarise the journey and to think about what I was going to do next. <laughs> right guys, Port Rush. Yeah, I made it, I changed at Coleraine. And got another train up to Port Rush. It was only about 10 minutes that um, second leg of the journey. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure there's much to do here. It isn't actually raining at the moment, but as you probably saw from the journey up, the weather is so changeable. In one minute it's blue skies, next minute clouds and rain. So I've taken my socks off. I've kept my shoes on at the moment, <laughs> just um, in case if I get my shoes wet, at least I've put my socks on, they'll be nice and dry, won't they? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, I'm going to maybe have a little look around and see where I end up. So thank you very much for watching anyway. I hope I can see you on another adventure soon. And as always, guys, cheers for now. Well, as it turned out, just a short walk away from the town hall was some of the most fantastic coastal scenery I've encountered for a long time. And I couldn't really end this video without showing you some of the amazing locations I went to. Now Port Rush itself is not too far away from the Giant's Causeway. I never made it that far on this trip, but what I would say guys is uh, don't ignore the town of Port Rush. It's got some great scenery and it's well worth spending a few hours here. Oh, by the way, I never did keep my feet dry. I got caught up in a massive sleet storm. But it was nice to get back on the train with a pair of warm socks, even though my shoes were absolutely soaking wet. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on another adventure soon.